Question number one, where am I? Well, I remember making the turn here, the left turn onto Rock Oak Drive. And I drove up to the end and then turned around right here, parked there, walked onto this red path, turned right, walked up a little ways, and then made a short left into this trailhead. I bet that's where I am, at the T. To confirm that, I'm gonna orient my map, assuming that those lines are north. Here's my compass, and I turn my map back and forth until the lines of the map, the north on the map, lines up with this north arrow. And there we go. So the turning arrow and the north on the map are lined up. So now I know that this map should be what I see out here. On the map, I see a pond that should be right in front of me, another pond off to the right of that, and another pond up to the right of that. It looks like a creek that comes down here. And when I look out in reality, I can see there's a pond there, some trees up further, which probably indicates another pond, and then up in the distance, I can see a third pond up by that big oak tree. Next, from this position, I'm being told to go 300 degrees and about 100 feet. That's the clue. Something should be there at 300 degrees and 100 feet. To find 300 degrees from where I am right now, I'm going to set my compass to 300. 300, and I'm lining that up with the sighting arrow and the, the front top notch of my compass. Then, I'm going to hold my compass flat and turn my whole body until Red Fred goes in his shed. The arrow goes inside the little red shed below it. Now I know that this direction is 300 degrees. I'll bring my compass up and I can sight it and I can see hey, about 100 feet away at 300 degrees there's that uh, tree and stand. Instead of walking with my face down at my compass I'm gonna look sighting at those cars in the distance and that tree and walk my 100 feet. Now that I'm here my next clue says to travel at 34 degrees and about 120 feet. 34 degrees, let me get that set on my compass. There's 20, 30, and these go by twos on mine, so there's 32, 34. Compass is set to 34. Now I'm gonna hold it flat and turn my body until Red Fred goes in the shed. He's in the shed now, and now I can line up and look this direction. That way is north, Red Fred. That's 34 degrees, and I can see in the distance, at 34 degrees, is that pole. It's about 100, 120 feet away. I'll head over there. Great. Now I'm at the pole. I followed two bearings that were given to me. The last skill that I need to know how to do with this is to find a bearing to report to somebody. So this station asks me to find what the bearing is back to the, the stand where I started. To do that, I'm gonna point my compass at the stand. It's lined up at the stand where I started. And now, holding it in that orientation, I'm gonna turn the bezel until Red Fred goes in the shed. Checking to make sure I'm still lined up with the stand. Red Fred's in the shed. And then I can read the bearing here. Looks like it's almost perfectly south maybe 182 degrees. So I could report that bearing. The stand is 182 degrees and about 150 feet from me. Before I head out on a longer hike, I wanna come up with a navigational plan, a storyline that I can follow and see how much it matches with what I see, what I see on the map. Here, I, I came up the California Riding and Hiking Trail, and I parked right here. On the map, I can see I'm going to make a small left-hand turn and a small right-hand turn right in here, crossing over Pine Creek. 
Then, if I make a left, I can continue on this trail, getting up to this trailhead here. I should make a right turn to get into the park. Then it looks like I'm going to drop down through a contour and back up to the second trailhead. This is where I was before. I'm going to follow this storyline and see if I can get up to these two trailheads correctly. Part of my storyline was crossing over a creek. This looks like the creek. So far so good. Now on the map it looks like I make a right turn and a left turn. And sure enough, here's a short right. And it looks like I have a short left here. You can also see up ahead in the distance the trail makes a sweeping curve to the left. And on my map, I can see here, there's a sweeping curve to my left on the map. So that means I'm pretty confident as to the spot that I'm at. Let's make this left turn and get up to this first trailhead. Another clue from the map, on one side of this trail I have open space and on the other side, the left side, I have houses. On the map I can see left side is houses, right side is open space. Again confirming what I see in reality with what I see on the paper map. So I'm predicting up ahead of this I should see a trailhead once I get up and over this hill. If at any point what I see in reality doesn't make sense with what I see on the map, I can go back to my last known point or stop and have a mental Snickers bar, think through where I'm at, look for more clues. Looking good, I can see right up ahead, looks like there is a trailhead. So I'm at this trailhead here, looks like I can enter there continue going straight, kind of a perpendicular line across to the second trailhead. I should see that across a little gully. Let's give it a shot. And sure enough, there it is. So my navigational story is working out really well. Now as I pull back into this starting trailhead where I was hoping to get to, I'm scanning around for the terrain. There's the ponds that I saw earlier. And I can see a trail that comes down to my right, loops around a big hillside. Let's take a look at the map. And on the map, I can see here the Savannah Trail heads out from, the, heads out from this trailhead. It parallels the three ponds. And sure enough, it loops around to the right. I can see the contour lines going from 200. There's no 300 mark, but I can look over a little further away and I can see a, a 300 and a 350 on a neighboring peak. So that means this is going up, kind of a two-pronged hillside off to my right. And as I look out in reality, I can see, sure enough, the trail heads around to the right. It parallels these ponds. And then there's this two-pronged hillside here and here with a bit of a, a gully in between that I can confirm on the map. So, what's my navigational storyline? If I want to take the Savannah Trail up, it should, and follow me with follow with me on the map, it should head up past some ponds, it's going slightly downhill, then slightly uphill. It should turn right as I head around a hillside. Then it should come up into this gully with a hillside both on my left and my right. Then it could, should make a gentle left turn as I go uphill. And then I should get to an intersection of the Lime Ridge Trail and the Savannah Trail, a four-way intersection. Off to my left, I should see some, uh, some interesting feature that I see here on the map. Off to my right, the hillside should drop off down, and I probably should see Ignacio Valley Road off to my right when I get to that junction. So let's hike this trail and see if my navigational plan matches up with what I was hoping for. Off to my left, I see first pond, Here's the second pond. Up ahead I can see more trees. Looks like a third pond. And sure enough, this trail is heading around. It looks to be turning to the right. To the right, I've got a gentle slope on my right side, going up to that original hill. And now this new slope on my left, with the trail cutting right up in the middle, just as my navigational story said. 
Now we have a gentle left turn. This comes out of this valley. And I'm predicting up ahead to the right, we'll see that Ignatia Valley Road. Sure enough, there it is in the distance. And I should come up with a four-way junction. Just as the map said, and as my story predicted, I come up to a four-way junction. One, two, three, and the direction I came from. Over to the right, I have this quarry, that interesting feature I saw on the map. Over this side, I've got Ignatia Valley Road. Now let's map and determine some UTMs from a map. Here's an idealized map with UTMs highlighted. Those are the numbers around the edges of the map that aren't latitude and longitude. So the first thing I'd like to do is find these UTMs. 296500. Here's the 296 line and the 297 line. So 2965 would be halfway between these. I've made a mark there. The second number, 4834150. On this side, we have the 4834, 4835. So 48341 would be right about here. Then I connect where these two lines come together, and this is that location. The second thing is to find the UTMs of a mapped mark. Here's one right here, this star. This star would be 297, 298, 297, 5, 297, 500, zero, zero, by 4834, four, and it's about halfway up, 500. Zero, zero. Now, I need to report my UTMs. I'm going to use a GPS to do that. To find my UTMs, one of the fastest ways to do that is to mark a waypoint. To do that, you can navigate through the different screens. Most GPSs have a button here or somewhere that lets you navigate through the different screens until I see a mark somewhere on there. I can scroll over with this GPS and press mark. Now, it automatically displays my location, 10S, 0587743, break, 4199281. That's my current location. A second step is if somebody gives me a UTM and I need to get there. To do that, I'm also going to go to the mark. So I'm in mark. I'm marking my UTM, but instead of accepting my current location, I'm going to scroll down to where the UTM is displayed, hit enter, and now I can change those numbers. 10S, we'll keep that the same. 0587743, I'm supposed to go to 0587850, so let me change that. 0587850. Five, zero. Now it's set, and down below I can hit OK. Now I need to go to those waypoints, which is in another page. You'll need to find where that is. Waypoints, there it is on mine. I press the different page button, but explore and you'll find the page marked waypoints. Select it, and there's waypoint number three that I just made. I'll select that and it automatically tells me, do you want to go to it? I'll select that, and now it takes me to that waypoint. All I need to do is turn and walk and follow the direction that my GPS is telling me to go. There it is, straight ahead.